one word? Uh, I would have to say a cliff. Uh, we was up so high, but it, uh, the fall was uh, longer than we thought, so. Depressing. Uh, we definitely weren't a team that, lose, that loses three of the last four games or should have lost that many games to begin with. Uh, and just looking back on it, how we lost those games, the little things that we could have done uh, to change it and fix it, uh, it's just depressing. You know, and, and really the game that sticks out is the game in Tuscaloosa where we fall five points short. If we win that game, we win the SEC West. We're playing for an SEC championship and probably a playoff berth. So, you know, that's the one you go back to that you're in that position to win that game and, uh, and could have put you into the championship game. I was rough on me personally. I know the team and I just kind of took some air out of it. But we like to focus on what we didn't do last year and try to grow from there. We don't really care what everyone else thinks. So we're worried about this team and our fans, and everyone, everyone knows the team that we have. We know the people who we are, uh, the units, the offense, the defense, the special team, and all the talent we have on this team. So uh, we're excited about our chances and, uh, of winning, and we don't care what anybody else says. You don't know that you'd ever have the opportunity to, to, to go back to a place where you'd had such fond memories um, and be around a lot of the people that um, made it such an enjoyable experience the first time. So when, when, it, when it all came together, uh, not just myself and my entire family, we were, we were ecstatic about our opportunity to come back. Excellent football coach, he has a great football mind. Uh, you know, and as a head coach, I know what he can do. I, you know, I, I, I've seen, I've worked with him before. Uh, so I know, you know, what I'm gonna, what I expect out of him, because I've seen it before. He knows what he can expect from me as the head coach and what my expectations of our defense being like are. And so I think uh, it makes the transition and the working relationship a lot easier. He likes to do things his way, uh, but he also is a, is a player coach. You know, that's what I like about him. And he's cool off the field and you can talk about him with anything. Uh, you know, we, we've grown close and uh, I'm, I'm ready to play. Uh, aggressive defense so you're the oldest guy communicate I got him you know what I mean y'all talk yeah y'all got great talk one of the things that he does fall into is understanding the expectations and the big picture expectations of the program and understanding how we do things um, you know, on our standard of excellence here at Mississippi State. And, uh, you know, that is, is, for a lot of times for outsiders is very, very different than a lot of other places. We have extremely high standards of expectations for our players. Well, I think our goals are, are the same from, you know, and, and haven't changed the goals of, of, of this program, which is ultimately all focused on bringing um, SEC West Championship and getting to Atlanta. He knows what those standards are going to be like. And so, you know, I think that it was an easier adjustment for him than a coach that hadn't been part of our program in the past. I look at it more as unfinished business. You know, you're just, you're, um, you, you, you helped get it started. Uh, you had great pride watching it continue to grow. And, and now that I've got the opportunity to, to, to again, serve here and, 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 and to be a part of the team that, that ultimately fulfills that goal of, uh, of playing that first weekend in December. Shoulder tackle. Left shoulder tackle, shoulder through the near pack, and drive a five. <laughs> when he first got here, uh, he was he was he came in, he approached the team, said we lost something. We lost something, we gotta find it. You know, uh, he he wasn't focused on uh, we were number one. He he picked up what we what we were feeling. So he related to us and we felt that and, uh, that's that's from that day we, we, we were all in his hands, so we we, we brought in. The first thing we want to be is we want to be a, a smart and sound defense. We want to de be a defense that uh, where the offense has to, you know, we, we try to take away what they do the best, you know, make them, make them beat you left-handed. Physically move them to get lined up right. We want to be aggressive. We want to try to dictate. We want to try to make things happen. This is a, the, the game is favoring the offenses right now. And, um, and, and you have two choices. You can sort of sit back, sit back and, 
can try to dodge bullets or you can try to come with, with some of your own. And that doesn't always mean, I think that you know, people take that to mean more blitz than, than perhaps, which is reality. Um, but we always want to be in a constant state of attack and uh, try to force the offense to, to crack under our relentless pressure. There's still a lot of development that goes on through training camp. There's a lot of different phases of it and things that we're looking for. Uh, for me, because you know, the, the biggest one is we're looking for guys to get reps. We work for this. All the conditioning, all the work you put in is to be out here, get to go play the game of football. You got 24 periods, two hours right now, two hours completely invested, committed, ready to go, everything I have. Every year at Spring Bowl, what you're trying to see is, is we want to get guys ready to go play. And, and uh, you want to see guys that have a lot of experience take steps to become better players. And uh, you know, those steps are probably smaller steps. Uh, but you want to see young guys that haven't played a lot take huge steps in development to prepare themselves to be ready to play on the field. The two guys that really probably took to the, the, the style of defense the quickest were Ryan Brown and A.J. Jefferson at defensive end. I think both those guys um, in spring practice really elevated their play from a year ago. Everybody knows we lost a great player in Preston Smith. Um, and the ability of those guys to make plays off the edge of our defense really, um, you know, you can never have too many defensive ends and, and, and their ability to make some plays I think is going to make um, Bulldog fans really excited this fall. Being that we're a young football team this year, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys, we have a lot of guys with experience, you want to see them continue to take steps and improve. There's a lot of guys that haven't played, haven't been in game situations. So it's their opportunity to show that they're ready to go get reps, they're ready to go perform on Saturdays, that they're putting the work in, they're developing both on and off the field to be ready to go be a, a, a Mississippi State football player. Learn how to play with maximum effort. Learn when you turn on the film that you're playing with great strain in everything that you do. I think we have a, a really good team chemistry. Now, uh, you know, when you have that, especially coming out of spring, you gotta go summer with a lot of young players. There was some solid leadership at the top and a lot of good team chemistry for guys to build off of. And to me, that gives you the, the opportunity to really improve over the summer and getting into the course of the season. At Sullivan's Office Supply, we've been selling quality office products and furniture in our area since 1959. We offer many brands and styles of office furniture. With free AutoCAD design, we help you decide the best arrangement for the function and then apply various price ranges and styles of furniture to fit that function. Let our experienced people at Sullivan's work with you to get you the best possible answer. You like working with us because we work with you. While you're out partying with your friends this weekend, remember, get a designated driver. Be smart, drive sober, or get pulled over. A message from the Mississippi Office of Highway Safety. Before we get, even get to the farm, that's, that's known like a curse word in the locker room. You know, you're not, you're not even going to say the farm, you know. I got the front row, front row. Back to work. Front, man. Front row. You don't give a hand to it, eh? You don't give a hand to it, eh? Huh? You got headphones on? Yeah. Well, turn up then. Turn up. We catch uh, bands. And if you don't catch the van, you, you got to catch somebody else. And, and a lot of people are, are kind of stubborn because, you know, you, you, you get the same van every day. So uh, you, you mess around. Like, I remember one day that uh, I missed the D-line van a couple of years back. And I had to ride with the corners. And they gave me a hard time because they thought I was, you know, wasn't going to come. It's like, oh, I thought you quit. Nah, I just missed the van because I couldn't find my keys. So. We on TV! We made it! We made it! Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah
Y'all happen to be the best man in the world right now. You happen to be the best man in the world. The reason we go out there to the farm, uh, over to South Farm, is just, you know, it's, it gives a different feel. It's a training camp mentality. You know, it's not just training camps at different time of year. It's not spring practice. It's not in-game, uh, in-season, in-game week. Uh, it is a whole different feeling. So we want to go to a different location, different environment. Uh, but to me, it does. It gives you a great training camp mentality of, of a different mindset of what you're doing out there on the practice field with the players. The farm is, um, it, it hasn't changed much since when I was here in 2010. It, uh, no frills, there's no, uh, no luxury items out there. All the beautiful amenities we have here in our first class uh, seal complex, none of them are out there. It's a field, it's, uh, it's mostly flat, it's got some holes in it. Uh, it's gonna be hot, usually that first, second week of August. Um, every now and then some unique smells come over if the wind blows a, a certain direction. Um, and it's designed to test you mentally. It's designed to, uh, to, to find out sort of the, the, the spine and the backbone of our team and, uh, and show us that, um, that we've got the mental toughness to survive the grind that is the SEC West. Throw your elbow down. That keeps your pads where? Period six. And, uh, low, okay? So here, take your elbow and throw your elbow down. And look at the boots I'm in, okay? Again, let's look sharp. Two claps, two claps, two claps. The farm, uh, hot. Uh, no shade, um, muddy out there. If you get a, a 20 minutes of rain, it's gonna be mud. So uh, it's just, it's Mississippi State camp is what it is. Why'd you overset him? Because you're zero focus on what you're doing. You're just kicking out here and you're seeing the, the, the film guy, the microphone guy, you're seeing everything. Instead of right there. I set all I'm looking at is right there. That's telling me everything I need to look at. That's called focus. Before I even got to the farm, the older guys was telling me, uh, you know, they're trying to spook me out. And, uh, you know, that's what we, I still do that same thing, but I think it's kind of funny. But uh, we it kind of spooked me out, and they were trying to tell me that, uh, oh, man, we're going to the farm. Like, it basically, like, we was going to, like, the dungeon or something, you know. But uh, as, I, as I went there and continued to go out, like, man, this is just practice. You know, the first time, like, it's just practice at another place. But after the 15 day, you, you you feel you feel that you feel that form symptom, and you like, all right, it's time to go. I'm ready to get back home. Hey, 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 hey. Gotta get back, back and be quick on feet, Nick. Quick on feet. Here we go. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Quick, 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 quick. Good. Get your toe. Rotate them heels out. Hey, never been to anywhere like the farm before, right? Older guys, help the younger guys out. Y'all remember what it's like to be a younger guy. Y'all remember what it's like to be a younger guy. Younger guys, trust me, it's gonna get a lot harder right now. We really don't tell them much. We kind of almost make it worse than I imagine that it actually is, just uh, so they expect the worst, but when, it's, when they're out there, they know uh, it wasn't as bad as they think, because if you scare them, then uh, that's all you have to do and they'll be better because of it. But uh, yeah, we just, we just let them go out there and figure out and find out and feel the heat for themselves. Good, 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 good. That's better, that's better. Run. Oh, go right and finish. Don't run like a helicopter. I don't know when you get there. Before you get to the farm, you know, you got a lot of people with those egos. You know, man, nothing's going to break me. You know, it's just football. You know, it's not going to hurt me. But they're not understanding that this, this is like a game day for them each and every day. You know, they got to treat it like it's a game day. Uh, and uh, you got to, after the f first first couple of days, they're good. Uh, but. The second week at the farm, that's when you really got to catch them because those guys' minds are blown. We ain't got to be used to being uncomfortable, man. We ain't tired. got to be used to being uncomfortable, man. Let's win today. 
Just to think about over the last five years, all the time that uh, all the work and everything that goes into that, that I put out there, all the sweat, blood, everything that uh, goes with training camp. And I uh, just know that was my last time, my last and final practice. Uh, it was humbling, it was exciting, uh, knowing everything I've done and I left everything I had out there. I learned so much at that farm in that so little time each and every year. And uh, I'm thankful for the farm. Hey, you get your tickets at Prime Sport? Yep, Prime Sport can get you tickets for anything. Even if it's sold out. Even if you want a VIP experience. Even if you want impossible to get seats. Even for <clears throat> a once in a lifetime event. Sorry. Even if you want to hang with celebrities. Prime Sport is the best. The best. Prime Sport, events that move you. While you're out partying with your friends this weekend, remember, get a designated driver. Be smart, drive sober, or get pulled over. A message from the Mississippi Office of Highway Safety. Year we try to we try to bring in different speakers uh, that are going to help the players and and you know to, to just hear from uh, someone different, uh, hear from someone that has great experiences. This year one of the speakers that came in was Maurice Claret. Uh, I thought he did a great job with the team. He's obviously a, a player that has been through a lot, you know. And, and when our players can look at somebody and relate to somebody that's been through similar circumstances, similar backgrounds of them. Uh, and hopefully learn from the mistakes. You know, Maurice does a great job of talking about the things that he's done, mistakes he's made. Thanks for having me here. Uh, it was cool to kind of watch y'all practice, watch y'all run around. Uh, obviously being away from the game, you know what I'm saying, any, any time I get a chance to come and share my experiences or sort of what happened in my life to basically help my projection or help my basically my downfalls in the past, you know, I enjoy doing it. You know, I had the world in my hands. Uh, I had everything I could possibly want, everything that any kid in this room uh, could literally want to do to change my life. Uh, but I basically dropped it all and messed everything up, all from a process of really not knowing how to think. To be so real with us, I mean, like, I haven't heard anybody as real uh, just talk to us as men. and. Uh, Point, pinpointing the things we need to work on, you know, like people trying to come back in your life, and, you know, when you're making it and, uh, for the wrong reasons. And, and then once, once adversity hits in your life, they are nowhere to be found. I used to find myself getting in a whole bunch of trouble. And I was getting in trouble uh, because I wanted to be a somebody amongst all my homeboys. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be the leader. I wanted to be the guy selling cars first. I wanted to be the guy selling dope first. I wanted to be the guy sort of to always get in fights and be the ringleader of everybody. Him doing that and making sure that we find time for what we need to do and be focused and, and make it harder on those guys who are coming back, trying to come back in our lives, that they, they really want to get close to us, make it, make it difficult for those guys. Coach Shanahan, just like Coach Trussell, reached out to me. He said, hey, Maurice, you know what, man? Uh, we have a sports psychologist here. And it was like, you know, since we have a sports psychologist, we want her to pair you up. You've been through a few traumatic experiences. Can you allow this lady to help you out and basically to help you get through this moment? We want to turn you into a better professional. So I'm like, nah, coach, don't worry about it. There's nothing that this lady can teach me. That's what I'm thinking to myself. She's a lady. I'm a gangster. I'm a gangster that plays football. Don't worry about it, coach. I'm cool, right? So lo and behold, we go play the Colts, uh, and after the game, they basically give me the call. They give me the call from the guy who basically cuts everybody. And the guy who cuts everybody calls me up, and he said, hey Maurice, you know, bring your playbook and bring uh, just the issue stuff that we have to you. Basically, the coach wants to see you. So I get out here, the coach uh, ended up sitting me down. Coach Shanahan, I remember it like it was yesterday. He said, hey Maurice, you know, we've tried to do everything we could possibly do. You don't want our help. There's nothing we can do. Bye, there goes the door. You know what I'm saying? I hope you land on your feet in some capacity. So lo and behold, I go back to California, and this is the first time in my life that I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed because I didn't make it. I'm embarrassed that I didn't make it happen. I'm embarrassed that basically I was told that I can't play football. So as a period of basically three or four weeks of going by with having nothing to do, I started to hit my homeboys back up. Hey, what you doing this weekend? Let's go out. Hey, what you doing this weekend? Let's go to this concert. Hey, what you doing this weekend? Let's go shoot pool. Hey, what you doing this weekend? And all of the behavior and all the habits and everything that basically I started in you know, Ohio in the first place and went to me to California and came back with me to Ohio, all these things basically have followed me. He did an outstanding job uh, relating to some of the players, relating to me. Uh, just everything on the field and off the field that uh, can affect your performance and affect your mindset off the field. So uh, he did a great job and he was the realest speaker ever that I've, I've listened to. And uh, he did his job and got his point across. 
it, there's a process where you have to get a chance to know yourself and know who you are, and know why you do everything, and why you do why you do everything, and what you do it for. And so I can kind of look around, it's a lot of young black dudes in here, right? And I can probably understand if I sat down and talked to a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all come from nothing. Really, this becomes the biggest opportunity in your life. A lot of your, a lot of your relationships are based upon um, what you do. You don't really realize it right now, but people are only your friends because of what you do, and who you are, and your status, right? Outside of that, they wouldn't be your friends, most people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the more you grow and the more you go in life, you start to realize like the only people you really have is your family, and you'll start to form relationships inside of here that become more closer than the ones that you have from your neighborhood growing up. You know what I'm saying? If you're serious about your life, man, like, hey, man, I gotta go work out, I gotta go study, I gotta do X, Y, and Z, right? And if they're there with you every step of the way, then they're supposed to be there for you. You know what I'm saying? If they're helping to add on to you. Hey, man, I'll be in the gym at five in the morning. You wanna get with me? Come on. I'll be in the gym at six in the morning. You wanna get with me? Come on. You wanna talk to me? Come on. You know what I'm saying? And essentially, you gotta create mechanisms to basically eliminate people from your life. That guy right there has been through a lot and, and uh, we thank God that he's expressing his wisdom to people like us. One of the things I, uh, that we want our guys to be able to do is learn from other people's mistakes, we not just do make them on their own. And, uh, uh, and hopefully that they can benefit and, and see mistakes and problems that other people have had and how to avoid those problems and how to make themselves not just better football players, but better men. Southern Miss. Uh, I think it's a great rivalry for the people of Mississippi. I know it uh, probably doesn't uh, get great attention on national level, but but for people in Mississippi, I know this is a big game. It's a huge game. It's a game that uh, when I first got here, we looked to put it on the schedule and said it was what we wanted to do for, for our players and for the people of Mississippi. Uh, it makes it a lot of fun, but it does. You're opening the season now with a big time game in a hard road environment uh, against a team that we know is going to be much, much improved from where they were last year. Southern Miss is a, they, they are, they're a very skilled football team. They're very well coached, you know, and what you see last year while they were having struggles, you, 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 they're, you see their struggles in execution, but you see their scheme. They've got guys open. They, they've, they've, got, they've got the system in place to, to make a quick turnaround to be a very high powered offense. And, and obviously the success that Coach Munkins had before is, um, Getting to Southern Miss speaks for that, and for them to stick with their plan, stick with you know knowing what they're doing, um, they have our full attention because we know that they've got a great offensive system and they've got the skilled players to go execute it. I feel as though that they 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 are motivated just like us. You know, everybody is zero and zero, and uh, they feel as though that they have more experience than us because we we lost a lot of people last year. But I think their chemistry is going to be a lot better, and they know what they they're getting themselves into. They've got some guys returning, a uh, pretty good defensive back, and they've got some JUCO guys that are transfers that have come in. So uh, they're going to give us their best shot, and they're going to be at home. So they're going to they're throw everything they have at us. We're practicing much later uh, at night. We're practicing uh, uh, from 8 to 10 at night. Um, you know, and hopefully we've got to get our guys up early in the morning, get them back to class early in the morning. Uh, but it does have a huge effect on the schedule, so our guys' bodies are getting ready to go perform, physically perform later on at night when a lot of them would already be in bed. Certainly an unusual time. Uh, they've got to deal with it the same as we do. Um, so, it, you know, there, there's no, no place for an excuse. But either way, I, I know this, our, our football team, work, you know, we, we prepare extremely, extremely hard uh, for this season. So whether they make us play at 9 p.m., 9 a.m., or 3 in the morning, um, and especially playing an in-state rival, I believe we're going to be awfully excited uh, to run out of that tunnel, and especially when we come out and see uh, a bunch of maroon in that stands. Um, I'm pretty sure we won't be checking our watch to see what time it is. Uh, first game of the season, uh, playing an in-state rival, we're all just excited. We don't care if the game's at 3 o'clock in the morning or if it's at 9 o'clock at night. We're going to be ready to go. Yeah.